I almost left my blade jacket on the ground. So happy that I didn't because it's freaking cold up here. I love winter, but I'm not the biggest fan of being cold. That's why many, many years ago, before I had gained the experience that I now have, when I was searching for a new piece of clothing and gear, I was so confused with the internet because people are like, oh, if you get down wet, you're not going to stay warm. But if you have a synthetic jacket and it gets wet, you're going to be perfectly okay. I didn't trust any of that. So what I did is I bought gear and I stood in the shower, got totally soaking wet, and then I went outside for a run in the middle of winter or for just a slow hike, you know, because I didn't want to cheat and get my body heat really built up. And I wanted to see how synthetic compared to cotton, compared to a down jacket. And that's how I started my gear experience. This is one of my all-time favorite subjects to talk about, but... Before I start talking about the gear, one of the most important things that I am continually amazed that my climbing friends don't know, when you're climbing outside in the winter and your hands get cold, because they will, because you're climbing and you'll have to take off your gloves eventually to fix something. When your hands get cold to the point where they hurt or even worse, you lose feeling in them, put them inside your jacket. Take your gloves off, put them next to your skin it might suck temporarily because you're putting your really freaking cold hands on your warm stomach, but sit there with it and warm your hands up. That's the fast way to do it. Once they get warm, put them back, back into your gloves and go back at it. Because if you don't do that, it's only going to get worse. Okay, now let's talk gear. One of the most important layers is the base layer. My preference is to wear a shelled micropile fleece jacket as my base layer. That's right, it's worn next to my skin with nothing underneath of it. Now I have an entire video dedicated to this subject and it is by far the most popular video that I've ever made. I'll put a link to it in the description. Go check it out. But the highlights are a real soft shell jacket and not these jackets that the market is saying, hey, go buy this awesome jacket. You'll look super cool, but really they're only good for going to the bar. A real soft shell jacket will have the following features. It'll have a micro pile fleece on the inside. This keeps any wetness that your fleece may retain away from your body because it has these very thin fibers that keep the majority of it from touching your skin. So although your fleece may be damp from sweat or outside wetness, it will still feel semi-dry. The next feature is that it has a wind-resistant shell. The shell cannot be waterproof because that means it'll contain all of the sweat that you're creating on the inside of your clothes. And you, that's not where you want your sweat. You want your sweat outside of your jacket. Next, it has to have a hood because if it's snowing or raining or sleeting, that, that's gonna go, you have a giant hole above. This hood is very important for keeping all of mother nature outside of your jacket. My favorite example of a jacket that fits this criteria is the Marmot Ether jacket. I seriously wear this 24 seven when I'm out backpacking and camping. Another good example of uh, what I would consider the perfect soft shell is a fleece ninja hoodie. It's the style of hoodie that zips up so high that it creates a face mask so you don't ever have to worry about carrying a face mask. This one is made by Low Alpine, but they don't make it anymore. The Patagonia R1 hoodie, that is a fantastic choice and loved by ice climbers across the world. If you put on top of that a light running wind shirt with the hood, uh, you'll have a fantastic soft shell system. Up next is the blade jacket. This is also known as a puffy jacket. Now, I prefer synthetic insulation of over down, not because I noticed any difference in keeping me warm when it's wet outside, but I did notice a huge difference when it comes to drying quickly. This isn't that big of a deal if you're just going on a day climb, but if you're going on an overnight climb and you're up in the tree and snow's falling down on you, sitting on your shoulders, getting stuck between your backpack and melting into your insulation, you want to be able to put that on top of your sleeping bag so that it keeps warm and dries overnight. So I prefer synthetic. Other than that, it is completely pointless to buy a belay jacket that doesn't have a hood. 
Like, that makes no sense to me. There's nothing better. There's nothing that will make you feel more comfortable in a, in a really cold, windy situation when the wind's coming in, biting your neck, when you can just toss up a big, thick, insulated hood and really zip up everything nice and tight. Now, I've heard people complain, oh, you should just use a big hat and a scarf, but a hood you can't lose a hood. You can't drop your hood when you're on an ice climb or in a tree. A hood is just so much better in every way. And people are like, oh, but it ruins your side vision. You can't see out the sides. As you can see, I'm not having any field of vision problems. So as long as your belay jacket has a big thick hood and around 100 grams of synthetic insulation, and I'm not quite sure what that translates to the down version because I'm not as familiar with down. But as long as it has those two things, you should be warm down to 10 degrees without much problem. Now, if temperatures are going to be below zero, I actually bring two belay jackets. That's right. If I'm going to be way up in the canopy, exposed to wind from all directions, that's right, wind comes from the bottom when you're up in the tree, uh, I want to make sure that I'm nice and warm and snuggly because there's nothing worse than getting chilled to the core and then having to shiver yourself warm in your sleeping bag. So the belay jackets that I own, I actually bought both of them used off of eBay. So, you know, beggars can't be choosers. It's kind of that deal. But this one is a crate hopper jacket, which I believe this is actually a brand that's cheap even when new. And this one is the Columbia Shimmer Me Timbers. It's got this fantastic, I don't know what it is, but it's magical. When I put it on, it's like I feel my body creating its own warmth. I know that's completely anecdotal and unscientific, but it is mentally helpful for me when I see that shininess and I don my jacket and zip it up. If you buy a belay jacket from some of the bigger climbing companies like Black Diamond, Mountain Hardware, or Patagonia, you're not going to have any problems with helmet compatibility. Now, when I'm hiking, I am not wearing a belay jacket. I'm just wearing a soft shell. Sometimes even when I'm climbing. If I'm doing anything where I'm sweating, then this is all that I'm wearing. You want to do everything that you can to prevent yourself from sweating. When all of these people talk about, oh, and when I go winter camping, I bring a change of clothes for sleeping in at night because the clothes that I'm wearing throughout the day get soaking wet. I'm like, then you're doing it wrong because you should not be getting your clothes wet at all. I mean, sometimes, like, especially when you're ice climbing and it's raining down water on you, it, that can be very difficult. But for the most part, I always sleep in the exact same clothes that I'm hiking and climbing in that day. The final layer is your shell jacket. Now, me and my main climbing partner, we get in very heated arguments over whether or not you need a waterproof shell in the winter. I think that you don't. He thinks that you do. I'm not going to argue for waterproof jackets because I'll leave that up to somebody else because I highly prefer wearing a non-waterproof jacket. I don't even know what the name of this jacket is. It's made by Marmont, but it's very stretchy. And the way that you can tell that a jacket has a waterproof membrane in it or not is just by putting your mouth up to it and breathing. And if you can feel the hot air coming out the other side, you know that there's not a waterproof membrane inside the jacket. That means that it's going to breathe very well when compared to a waterproof jacket, something like Gore-Tex or Event. The reason why I'm so against waterproof membranes in the winter is because when snow lands on you, you just brush it off before it melts and you'll keep perfectly dry. Um, but I do still wear a shell jacket over my belay jacket because most belay jackets are made, have a very, very thin outer shell on them, which can snag and get torn and cut on trees or rocks. So I like having this thick shell for when I'm climbing because it protects my layers underneath. Another reason why I usually bring a shell jacket is because they have lots of pockets on the outside to stash small, like, food or anything that you need to easily access while you're climbing. And one of 
the best features of a really well-made shell is a big fat hood that fits comfortably over your helmet while at the same time it doesn't get in the way of your vision. So it'll protect your face and you'll still be able to see around you but it'll also keep snow, rain, and sleet from falling in through the holes of your helmet. Like I said, I don't even know what the name of this jacket is. I again bought it used on eBay but it's made from uh, Marmont's M3 soft shell, which is their soft shell material that doesn't have a membrane in it. The best way that you can figure out uh, whether or not a shell has the membrane in it is to go to the store, pick it off the shelf, and do the breathe test to see if, um, if you can feel your air go through the pierced material. For pants, I do the exact same layering as I do for my upper body. For my base layer, I just wear a micropile fleece base layer against my skin and I put a heavy, durable, non-waterproof shell pant over top of it. Now that is pretty much all I wear from temperatures around 40 degrees down to zero degrees and I'm usually staying warm with that. But two years ago, I was camping on the North Shore doing some ice climbing with my friend and temperatures were forecasted to be negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. That was horrendously cold. On that night, I did bring a, basically a puffy pant. I picked these up at a military surplus store. They're huge on me, but Wearing these pretty much saved my legs because it was insanely cold. Even though I was sleeping at night with two face masks on, I still got a little bit of a frost nip on my lips because the temperatures were so cold. But as long as you're staying in temperatures above minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, you should never really have to worry about wearing a poofy shell pants. Some final notes. I always wear mittens. My hands don't stay warm in insulated gloves for some reason. When I'm actually having to deal with carabiners and stuff, it's nice to have just a small thin pair of fleece mittens so that your skin isn't in direct contact with the metal. Otherwise, when I'm climbing, using ice axes, hanging around in the tree, uh, I have mittens on because this is really the only way to keep my hands warm. And as far as the face goes, I usually don't have a problem unless temperatures are well below zero degrees. If that's the case, then I'll wear a pair of goggles with um, just this traditional neoprene style face mask. Whew, that was a lot of stuff. Uh, hoods, hoods, and more hoods. Every jacket that you own should have a hood. Remember what I said about just creating the cozy shelter? Uh, I don't know why you'd buy a jacket without hoods. That's the last thing I got for you. Yeah, sorry for all of you guys who hate hoods. I'm not a non-hood hater, but I just love hoods a lot. Okay, I don't know where I'm going with that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Goodbye, and be safe.